Hey everybody, welcome to Everyday Life. Uh, today we're going to talk about cast iron skillets and how to season them and maintain them. Alright, today we've got a brand new Lodge cast iron skillet. This is a ten and a quarter inch. Just picked it up at the local store and uh, we're going to season it up. It already has factory seasoning, but it's not quite the best. We can make it better so it's non-stick. Over here, this is my KitchenAid 10 inch skillet. I've had it for almost maybe almost 10 years, maybe, but yeah, I've stripped it down, reseasoned it a couple of times, and uh, it's beautiful for scrambled eggs. If you can cook scrambled eggs in your cast iron and it doesn't stick, it's well seasoned. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all the labels off here. We're going to wash it with some hot water and a stiff nylon brush, a little scrub brush. Then we're going to put it over on the stove to heat up and get it to dry. All the, all the water will evaporate out of the pores. And uh, <clears throat> then we're going to coat it with some oil and bake it in the oven. We bake it upside down in the oven so all the oil will drip out. We just put a very thin, thin coating of oil in there. And you want to do maybe two seasonings to start with and after that you can go from there to see if uh, you need any more. Everybody talks about their favorite type of oil to use for seasoning cast iron. I stick with lard or shortening. It's easy, it's inexpensive, it does the trick. Some people swear by olive oil, avocado oil, grape seed oil, uh, flax seed oil. Eh, keep it simple. So we're gonna get this uh, scrub down, heat it up, and I'll show you how I put the uh, oil. Here's a, my KitchenAid, and here's my Lodge 12 inch. Uh, I've got a couple of bigger ones, different uh, Dutch ovens, um, enamel, air cast iron, the original no stick pan. If it's treated right, um, you don't have to baby it. You could take a licking and keep going, but if you leave it out in the rain overnight, you know, it gets a little bit of rust on it. You might need to uh, scrub it with a little bit of uh, vinegar and water. Dry it off and re-season it. It'll be good as good as new. And this one, I had a lot of gunk built up on the outside of it from campfires and barbecues, and I stripped it down to the bare metal. What I did was I put it upside down in the oven and I put it on cleaning mode, and it got so hot it just burned everything off of it, leaving the uh, bare metal. And then. It starts to oxidize very quickly. You have to scrub down with a little bit of uh, vinegar and water, dry it quickly, and then you start the process with your favorite oil or whatever. Watch. What's the difference between a lodge and a KitchenAid cast iron? Not much, except for maybe a little bit of a longer handle. Um, they're almost exactly the same, same thickness. Um, the only difference really is with the older, the antique, classic uh, cast iron pans, the, uh, the Wagner, the Griswolds. Oh, beautiful, beautiful pans if they're maintained. Um, however, they tend to burn food a little bit uh, if uh, you're not watching it. They uh, have a thinner pan and uh, in the manufacturing process they, they uh, polish this smooth and uh, the, the thickness is a little bit less. Lodge, it has such a beautiful even, even heating. Um, they say they're not the best for conducting heat but 
the retains the heat, which is what you really love when you're baking or uh, frying. You can go from the oven to the barbecue, stove top, open campfire, very versatile. You can bake, you can braise, you can deep fry, fry. What else can you do with it? Uh, hammer nails, just about anything. <laughs> Would you go back to the regular pots and like pots and pans? Well, heck no. So this is a little hotter than I wanted it to be. <laughs> Someone forgot about it. So I preheated my oven 375 degrees, and I'm just going to take a little bit of this lard. Hey, you want some? Don't really need too much, maybe like a, a teaspoon. And just coat, coat your uh, pan with it. And we're gonna rub off the excess. Wipe it all off. And there'll be just a very thin micro layer of, of oil protected. And gradually through use, uh, layer upon layer of Micro seasoning builds up on the pan, giving it a beautiful shiny gloss. The beauty of these things is you don't even need to use soap on them when you're cleaning them. All you need is just hot water and a stiff brush, and uh, you're good. That's all you need. So I'm just wiping this with paper towel. If you use a uh, any other sort of towel, I suggest you uh, don't put that in your washer because it's going to get everything greasy. Yeah, and I'll also put it on the outside. The handle, eh, I don't, I don't really want to get it on my hands, but you know, it's already been seasoned at the factory. It's not going to rust, but it's going to look beautiful it's to protect maintain your pan. So, you a lot of extra residual drippy stuff. You don't want it to drip because then you'll in, be in a situation where the seasoning hasn't quite cured all the way through and you'll have like sticky spots in the middle of your pan or like you'll see drips that have ran. You know that's too much, too much seasoning. Just need a little bit. After it's already seasoned, you can actually re-season the, the inside of it on the stovetop. You just heat it up to about medium high, get it till it starts to smoke a little bit, put a little bit of oil in there, wipe it around just like that. You can put the, some tongs around this towel if you don't want to burn your fingers, if you're a little nervous about that. And uh, just let it smoke, it'll, it'll dry and it'll bond, it chemically bonds to the, the metal. It polymerizes and turns it to a non-stick coating. So I think that's about that. That's about done. Um, we're just going to put it in the oven, upside down. Just in case there's any drips, get a baking sheet, line it with some foil, put it underneath so it'll catch any drips and nobody will get mad at you for making a mess. So we're going to leave it in there for an hour and then we're just going to leave it in the oven to cool off. And How many times should you do this process when you get a new cast iron? I would say twice. Before you use it? Factory, factory seasoning and then two more layers. <laughs> But that's my preference. Some people just use it straight out with the factory uh, seasoning and, and they enjoy it, but you know, to each their own. Will it stick when you first cook in it? It should not. However, they always recommend uh, you cook something with a high fat content, uh, like bacon, bacon, sausage, just to really get uh, the grease into the pores of the, uh, of the metal, of the iron. Perfect. And then that's it.
Does your wife prefer these pans? Yeah, she doesn't like the weight of them. They're too heavy, but... <laughs> but I like cooking in them. They're my favorites. Oh yeah, there's nothing you can't do with them. Do we have any other ones other than the black cast irons? Oh yeah, we have quite a collection. We have the enamel one. Yep. We also have the Dutch oven, uh, square griddle. We got this as a, a wedding gift and absolutely love it over an open fire or on a barbecue. It's also a, lar a lodge, 12 inch square griddle. Shout Great out. for pancakes. Shout out to Lisa. Shout out to Lisa. Hey, how you doing girl? <laughs> She's the one that got that for us. Beautiful. That's Lisa um, um, Brown. Yes. LB. LB. Greasy. Yeah, and we're back. Uh, just pulled this out of the oven. It's still a little bit hot. Um, here we've got a nice little sheen happening on the pan. Both sides. This is just one layer of seasoning. I'm going to do another one just so it's nice and non-stick. These things are a godsend. A little slip-on. Uh, we got these I think from Amazon and uh, beautiful. So you don't burn your hands. Um, oven mitts are great too. Uh, towel. Um, they also make silicone versions of these. But uh, oh, I love this. Nice and comfy. Little hanging hook. Hang it. But yeah, must have. Don't burn your hands. Um, what else is there to talk about cast iron? Um, never put it in the dishwasher. Don't leave it in a, a sink full of water to soak. Don't soak it. Should you use soap on it? Well, back in the old days, the soap they used to wash dishes with and everything had lye in it. And lye was very caustic. It would eat away at the, the seasoning. Now with like a palm olive and dawn, you don't really have to worry if there's no lye in it. You don't need to because the heating, preheating of your pan will kill any bacteria that will be on your pan before the food even touches it. So you don't really need soap. Hot water, stiff brush, get it clean, wipe it dry, brush a little oil in there, wipe it off and then you're good to go. Uh, stack them up if you want or hang them. They have a nice little hook hang. Like that. If you're going to stack them, if you're going to stack the pans, uh, put a nice paper towel in between the layers so you don't scuff up your beautiful interior seasoning. Uh, that's about all I can think of about cast iron. Uh, utensils. Utensils, I prefer wood or silicone utensils. You can use metal. Metal's fine too. They, nothing will damage it. It may chip off a little bit of seasoning if you're a little rough with a metal spatula, but it can always be re-seasoned. Not going to damage it like no stick pans, the, the Teflon or whatever they call it nowadays. You can't use metal on those. Beautiful pan. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. It was informative for you. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. Keep on cooking. And see you next time.